Now we're going to talk about gravity. A long time ago, a man named Galileo went up the Leaning Tower of Pisa with a big ball and a little ball. The people used to think the big ball would hit the ground first, but gravity don't work that way. So uh, Galileo dropped the two balls and they hit at the same time. This proves the phenomenon of uh, large objects fall the same rate as small objects. There's a constant G, 32 feet per second per second. So he, Newton come along and was sitting underneath an apple tree and an apple hit him in the head and he wondered why the apple didn't fall upward instead of downward. And he started to work around and figure out the laws of gravity. One half GT squared he found out. In the first second, it falls 32 feet. The second second is squared to time. It's uh, 64 feet, and so on. Now, uh, Einstein come along and said uh, unified fields and things like that. So uh, what they're doing now is uh, if you go around a black hole, your time changes on your clock. So gravity has an effect on clocks in life, in the heartbeat. If a twin brother goes around a black body and the one's on Earth, the one on Earth will die before the one going on the black hole. So uh, another thing, if uh, the twin brother's coming towards the Earth at the speed of light, the twin brother will age on Earth more so than the guy in the rocket ship, the twin brother in the rocket ship. And then uh, they come together, one would be an old man and one would be a young man. But he could never go back to uh, his original uh, space. So he eventually would die too. Today we're gonna to talk about missiles. Now missiles are important thing in this world for defense. Most missiles work on principle of thrust. Now you start at the nozzle called the cone of the missile. Then you have the airfoils that steer the missile towards the incoming aircraft. They have a basketball in them, they call it. It's a nickel chromium steel tank with 5,000 pounds of air pressure that works valves that work the ailerons to control the missile to go on to its target. There's a lot of important valves in the missile and they got O-rings in them. These O-rings withstand pressure of 5,000 PSI. Now they have JP4 which is kerosene and inhibited red fumic nitric acid for fuels. When they mix, they explode into fire and thrust. Then it comes out the after part of the missile where the thrust is able to push the missile at high speeds, faster than propeller airplanes. Uh, most missiles are controlled by radar. Radar finds the aircraft coming in. Radar is also on the missile, and they uh, come together on a plotting board. And when they get close, they fire the missile off, and it has three bombs in it, with pelts in it. <laughs> These pelts spread and knock the aircraft down. Sometimes you get a direct hit right on the aircraft. It takes just one missile to knock down an aircraft. And they uh, usually climb above the aircraft and dive into it. They go about 2,000 miles an hour. The Germans were the first ones to make the jet. They had jet aircraft in World War II. Now the Americans got night sights. These nights are 
our defense of uh, incoming aircraft in different areas. They have night sights all over the United States. Also, they have uh, underground uh, rockets. They have atomic warheads and hydrogen warheads in them for uh, wartime, just in case the country uh, attacks us. And um, we're um, getting defeated, we use these. We blow them off the map with hydrogen bombs. Now, missiles are an important factor in space because we use uh, the same principle that we use in the night to drive the missiles into the ionosphere.